If you're an income investor, you have to consider the risks of the funds in which you invest. The purpose of this video is to review one such high income fund. It's not to advise you whether to buy the fund or not, it's purely to educate you about the risks. The idea is that you'll be able to look at the fund yourself, look at its key information document and say, yes, given these risks, I think that's a great investment. Or it could be, I only get this much return for that much risk. No way. Also, by the time you come to look at this video, the return may be quite different because the price may have moved up or down. So really, it makes no sense for me to talk about return. Risk, on the other hand, is fairly stable. That won't have changed much. So now let's take a look at the risks of this STHS fund. Remember, this is not a recommendation. If you want to know whether this fund is suitable for you, seek independent financial advice. OK, so you're looking for a fund which generates income. The higher the income, the better. But of course, as with everything in life, there's a drawback. The drawback is the relationship between risk and return. If we take a low risk, we'll get a low return. If we take away the effect of inflation, cash returns are currently negative. Unfortunately, if we take a high risk, that doesn't guarantee a high return. High risk also comes with a higher probability of incurring a high loss. So let's bear that in mind when we look in detail at this exchange traded fund. It has the snappy title, PIMCO Short Term High Yield Corporate Bond Index Source USITS ETF, Sterling Hedge. Or you could just use its ticker, STHS. Here's how the fact sheet describes the fund. It's a passive fund, so it simply tracks an index. In this case, a Bank of America Merrill Lynch index. It's a credit index, which means that it tracks US corporate bonds, and the maturity of those bonds is between zero and five years. Of course, some bonds can have lifetimes of up to 30 or 50 years. So zero to five year is very short duration. And as we'll see, that's very important for risk because it means they have lower interest rate sensitivity. The index it tracks is a US corporate bond index. That means that the assets which the fund buys will be based in the US. So you might think that as the value of the US dollar strengthens and weakens versus the pound, it would affect the value of our fund. But we'll see later on that that's not the case. And the magic words for an income investor are high yield. Because the bonds in the index have a low credit quality, that means that they come with a higher risk of default or bankruptcy. They compensate the investor with a higher return. So we know that this fund will be buying US short duration junk bonds. The fact sheet also gives us the key risks. There's no capital protection. So in theory, you could lose your entire investment, although that's very unlikely. But you could certainly make a capital loss. Because it's investing in bonds, we know that the value of those bonds will be affected by the level of interest rates. You can think of it as the seesaw. As the level of interest rates rises, the value of bonds goes down. And although having short duration mitigates that effect, the risk doesn't go away completely. Exchange rates could also be a problem. If we buy dollar denominated bonds, and the dollar weakens versus the pound, then when we convert the value back into sterling, the value of those assets would fall. Of course, it could work both ways. If the dollar strengthens, then that would increase the value of our fund. But as well as volatility from interest rates and changes in credit quality, we may also have to consider the volatility that's added by currency fluctuations. So what's the volatility of the fund? Remember, volatility is just the typical annual change in price of the fund. A larger volatility means a greater capital risk. In the case of STHS, the volatility is 6.1%. That may not mean anything to you until we put it in context. Over the same period, the volatility of sterling versus the US dollar was 12%, almost twice as much. The volatility of gold was 14%. The FTSE 100 was 15%. And oil was almost 40%. So you can see that a volatility of 6.1% is quite low. If you're of a suspicious disposition, which you should be as an investor, you should be asking yourself, why is the volatility so low? One of the primary reasons is the short duration of the fund. Imagine we buy a bond. We pay £100 today, that's the downward arrow. The lifetime of the bond is two years, which means we get two coupons of 3% per year. And in the second year, we receive our money back, £100. Those are the cash flows you get when you buy a two-year 3% bond. But let's say the day after the bond is issued, the yield jumps to 4%, but not for you. 
because the coupons are frozen into the bond. The income is fixed forever. While everyone else is getting 4%, your coupon will be frozen at 3% and it'll be frozen at that level for two years. That means you lose out on 1% for two years, or two pounds. As the yield jumped up, the price of your bond would fall down by two pounds. It would fall to 98 pounds. Let's say on the same day, you bought a three-year 3% bond. Again, the day after the bond's issued, the yield jumps to 4%. But instead of losing 1% for two years, you've lost 1% for three years, which is three pounds. And the price of your bond will fall from 100 pounds to 97 pounds. And that's why the longer the lifetime of a bond, the longer your income is frozen at that level, and that makes the price of your bond more sensitive to interest rates. So to summarize, if interest rates are rising, reduce the duration of your investments. And of course, at the moment, the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates. So that risk is very salient at this time. Another reason that the volatility is low is that this fund is currency hedged. No, not that type of hedge. The fund manager will buy a derivative that takes away the currency fluctuations. They'll pay a fee for that hedge, and that fee will be passed on to you in the management fee of the fund. In fact, there are two versions of this fund, one which is hedged and one which isn't. The unhedged fund has a volatility which is twice that of the hedged fund. Sometimes the volatility will work in your favour. So you can see that during Brexit, sterling devaluated versus the dollar, and that gave a significant boost to the value of the fund but only the one which is unhedged. Of course, it could equally well go the other way. So say news breaks that we're going to have soft Brexit, sterling could quite easily strengthen by 30%, and the unhedged fund would lose that 30%, but the hedge fund wouldn't. And that's why your capital risk will be lower the lower the volatility. We'd also try and avoid funds which are too small. If we look at the source website, it gives the assets under management for this fund. It's about £860 million. Because the fund is very large, it's very unlikely that it will close. For funds with a value of less than about £20 million, that has to be a concern. But it's certainly not a concern here. As with any credit fund, liquidity is a risk. What do we mean by liquidity? Well, it's just the time taken to sell your assets. Now, the fund itself is an exchange-traded fund. If there's a crisis, it can mean real problems for the fund manager because the time taken for an ETF investor to sell their holding might be as little as 10 seconds. But as people take their money out, the fund manager has to sell bonds, and it'll take a lot longer than 10 seconds to do so. During a credit crisis, it may take days or even weeks to sell the bonds, and that means the value of the bonds can get completely out of sync with the value of the exchange-traded fund. So although a credit ETF seems liquid, under the hood and in a crisis, it may not be liquid at all. And one place where this fund doesn't look so great is its fees. The ongoing charges for the fund are 0.6%. A fee of 0.6% means that if you invest £10,000, you'll have to pay £60 per year to the fund manager. For a passive fund, you should expect to pay around £30 per year, but credit funds do tend to be a little bit more expensive. And remember, we do have that currency hedge which we have to pay for. So in terms of our ETF checklist, the fund certainly provides a good income. I'll show you how to check that in a second. The volatility is low because the duration of the fund is low and because of the currency hedge. The fund doesn't have low management fees. 0.6% is fairly expensive. It is a large fund, so it's unlikely to close and it benefits from the economies of scale. But we do have to be worried about the liquidity of the bonds which are in the fund. Now, one of the things I didn't talk about was the yield on the fund. When you watch this video, it'll probably be quite different. So this is how you can find it for yourself. Go to the Morningstar website. Search for STHS. And if you scroll down, you'll see that the 12 month yield is 5.49%. As the price of the fund fluctuates, that will vary quite a lot. But certainly at the moment, that's a pretty good yield. Do you invest in high yield credit? And do you think the risk reward is fair? Maybe we missed some of the risks. We'd love to know what you think. Tweet us at Pensioncraft, message us on Facebook. And if you want to see more of these videos, subscribe to our channel.